Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Stacy from Peony Lane Designs.com. And I'm so excited because I get to announce I finally got finished with my furniture flipping toolkit. So this is a free downloadable uh, PDF for you guys. If you get signed up for my email newsletter, always a catch, isn't there? If you get signed up for my email newsletter, I will send you one of these absolutely free. It's a wonderful PDF. It's over 10 pages. And in it, it's got everything you need to help you bring your furniture flipping up to the next level if you think you're ready to sell. Um, this is a great resource. I've got some junking pro tips in there. So let me show you junky pro tips. I've got, you know, your junk and survival kit. The hunt list. Okay. Let me share this one with you. Because it's like magic. I am not lying. If you write down the things that you are hunting for, they show up. I am not kidding. But this, um, you can print the PDF multiple times. Give a list to your friends who are junkers. Never go junking with a friend, though. If they're a junker and they like the same things you like, don't take them with you. That's like a battle. We, I take my sister with me a lot and we don't have the same taste, but every once in a while, there'll be one thing that we both want and it's, it's ugly people. But give your hunt list to your friends who are junkers, give them a budget. Give them a budget. Um, I made the mistake of telling people what I was looking for without giving them a budget. And then I was like, well, I can't make any money on that. So, but write it down. So on one column, there's the furniture pieces and the walls and smalls on the other side. Because uh, you make a living on walls and smalls. Sometimes I pay my rent on walls and smalls. And then I've got track my flip. This is a great worksheet. This will help you get a handle on what you actually spent. Um, if you're doing this as a business, you need to track this because your inventory becomes really important to the IRS and how much you paid for it and how much you're selling it for so they know you profit. It's really important for you as well because you get to deduct, to deduct everything you paid for that piece. So, um, you know, if you just said, I sold this, dresser for a hundred dollars they're gonna ding you for a hundred dollars but if you put fifty dollars into it you only get dinged for fifty dollars so this helps you get a handle on that and what I put in here was a description of the piece there's a spot for a photo just take a quick picture and stick it in there of what it looked like before and then you know a place to write your design ideas the supplies you needed to buy and what they would cost supplies that you used out of inventory so like I have painters tape I have paint I have brushes things that I, I normally use on a day-to-day -day basis that I don't need to buy this would be a spot for things like if you don't have the handles that you want to buy or that you want to use on the piece you gotta buy them and then the supplies used and then I have you know your purchase price your estimated supply costs and the reason it's estimated is because a lot of times you're using one tenth of a roll of tape or you know you have to estimate some of your costs total hours you invested because let's face it that costs you money that's your time your time is worth money and then what your final selling price is so you know try and track your time accurately because let's go oh, babies ladies and gentlemen a lot of times I meet people who do this and they go oh I don't I don't count my time and then I just put what I think I'd pay for this piece and it's like you guys you're hurting yourself because if you put 10 hours into a piece and you paid $50 for it to begin with and you charge 125 how much you make in an hour after all your supplies you're making less than the kid at McDonald's then you might as well just stop doing this and go to McDonald's because <laughs> you're never going to make a living this way. But anyway, I digress. I digest. Um, and then I have in there, for those of you who are ready to move to that next level and actually start selling in a retail space, <gasps> your booth planning worksheet. I love this thing. I started using this immediately after creating it and I wonder how I live without it now. Um, I kind of did this anyway I, on a piece of paper, but now it's more, I've got a, 
um, three ring binder. It's not in here. It's because I was working on it last night. It's out there. Um, I was sitting on the couch after my daughter went to bed working on my future booths. Uh, so every month I'm at an occasional sale. So I put the month in here and I kind of try and do like a theme or a color or, or things like that. And that may not be something that everybody does, but you know, when you've got Christmas, that's a theme. When you've got Thanksgiving, that's a theme. Halloween is a theme. Valentine's Day, that's a theme. So um, I write the month and the theme and then the primary colors that I plan on using and the secondary colors because when I go out into my inventory space and if you've ever seen the video of the bridal shower that I did, it's over here. I know where it is now. It's over here. Um, I'll put a link in the cards so you can see what my inventory space looks like. Um, <laughs> my, one of my husband's goals for this year is to get my inventory under control for me. So he'll be working on that space. Um, I go through my space then and I look for those colors. So one of the ways you design a space is by grouping colors and metals and things like that in varying heights. So, you know, if I'm doing a Valentine's Day theme, which was the one I was working on last night, my colors are red and pink. You're obviously gonna have some whites in there or some blacks or some neutrals, but your primary colors for Valentine's Day are gonna be red and pink, right? So I go out there and I start pulling red and pink and red and pink and red and pink, and that's all I'm think focusing on as I'm pulling my supplies together. But anyway, and then I've got a spot for what your anchor pieces are gonna be, and your anchor pieces are your big pieces of furniture, like your um, you know, dressers or couches or chairs or things like well chairs are really more that's that's the layering pieces so your big heavy anchor pieces those giant pieces that are going to be your statement pieces in the booth and then we've got the layering pieces now i consider layering pieces like wooden chairs arm chairs things like that that you can move in front of bigger pieces and on top of bigger pieces so they're your layers you want to start with your anchors put your layers on you know all this if you if you don't we're gonna we can talk about that please comment down below if you'd like to know more about like staging a booth and things like that but you put in your layering pieces um, small coffee table spindly things with spindly legs that are you know like this thing back here this dresser that I'm gonna be working on that's an anchor piece but um, this piece down here that you can't see that you've seen me do the epoxy and stuff on is the spindly legs. It's a small piece. That's a layering piece. So anything that's small, spindly, easily moved or put on top of stuff, layering pieces. Okay. And then walls, at least one mirror. And let me tell you why, because I read a book and I'll put the information in the description below. Um, it's called, uh, why we buy and a mirror in your space is like magic. Why? Because we all like to look at ourselves. You think we don't, but it's true. So after reading this book, I put in this big mirror in my space because I have what's called like a runway space. It's right inside the door. People just sort of walk past it. It was like magic. I put that mirror in and people were drawn into my space. So now I have written on the booth planning worksheet at least one mirror. You don't want to go to fun house and get too many mirrors, but at least one or two mirrors, but walls and then theme based smalls. So if I know, like I know for Valentine's day, I have a sign that is a Valentine's day love sign. That's going to be in my theme, theme based smalls. And then, um, soft pieces, ephemera, tablecloths, pillows, uh, paper pieces. I have some Valentine's Day cards. They're vintage that um, are from like World War II that I have framed. Those are my ephemera, my pieces that are going to go in here. And then lighting pieces. What lighting pieces are you going to want in the space? Very important. Um, are you going to use secondary lighting? Are you going to use anything like um, accent lighting because you're going to have the pieces that you're selling like lamps that you're selling but then are you going to have up lights or accent lights or fairy lights that you're not selling that you're just using to light up your space put that in here um, replacement pieces here's the thing people don't think about so you set up your pretty little booth right you set up this gorgeous space 
And then you forget that if that dresser there sells out of my gorgeous little space, I now have to put something in there. So while you're planning all of this, plan to have your replacement pieces ready and at the go so that your, your booth is ready to go. So please get signed up for my newsletter and uh, grab your free copy of this furniture flipping toolkit because there are some wonderful little information pieces in here and all these really great worksheets. So thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, would love to see you guys back here every week. If there are other things that you have questions on as far as planning a booth or flipping furniture, please comment down below. Love to hear from you guys. I want to become a resource for you in 2019, but to do that, I need to know what you're struggling with. So please tell me what's your pain point? What do you need to know? What's broken? How can I help you fix it? Um, yeah, get signed up and let me know. Comment down below what you'd like to see. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you're notified of future videos. Um, thanks for watching everyone. Happy junkin' and happy furniture flipping. Bye! Visit my blog, peonylanedesigns.com for more tips, tricks, and inspiration. Thanks for watching everyone. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll be notified of new videos. I post every week DIY tutorials and of course, more junkin' videos.